presentation was outstanding. No questions about it. Thank you. Um, I was expecting something about that. My question has been targeted mostly was the big difference between uh, using library second one and third one because I seen it was redone entirely. Oh, between YUI two and three. Yeah, because I seen it's like a completely new language right now. It's very yeah. There was a significant syntax change from two to three. Um, <clears throat> that actually represents a bit of the evolution of programming in JavaScript and um, kind of the state of the web as it was, the best practices that we knew when we were developing at that time. So if you go back 15 years, then Yahoo didn't exist, right? So if you go back 10 years, then, you know, it's been around for a few years, but in 2000, you know, JavaScript is not a very popular language. And so there's not a lot known about the nuances of coding in front-end engineering, professional front-end engineering, and things that are scaling well. And the notion of even having a front-end engineer as a title didn't exist. That didn't come for a few years after that. So what you have is the, um, the YUI starts out as uh, an amalgamation of best practices that are developed at Yahoo. And so they're answering a lot of specific questions. And so that then grows organically into a library, which is a set of utilities. Um, and then over time, we see how those utilities fit well together. And when we, uh, the library is used at, at Yahoo we, and, uh, and elsewhere, right, because it's open source, we start to see the patterns on uh, how the utilities should talk to each other. And as the developments, uh, as the best practices Kind of grow up and we, we learn more uh, more best practices as time goes on. We want to incorporate those into the library, but at a certain point, it becomes uh, incompatible, backwards incompatible. So we want to, what we want to do is, um, is we want to say, we want the library to be as tight as it, as it can be, but really own those best practices that, that are known today instead of uh, representing some of the best practices that were as good as we could do or as much as we knew you know, five years ago. And so in, from two to three, we just decided to make a clean break. Like, all right, this is how things should be done now. So let's start with an API that works for that. And at a certain point, we, we make the call that, you know, can it be backward compatible to two? It would be a lot easier if we just broke backward compatibility and just did it right. And so that's what we did. And it's um, uh, it's a big change, but we're really happy with the APIs. I know that everyone that I know that's actually uh, has a history of coding in two and is now coding in three, they love it. Yeah, I see that it's really big difference because what I was experiencing myself in uh, UI two and right now with going on third, it's not just a language change, it's actually a functionality change and what it gives you there. Right. Yeah, and there's so it's not to say that we left everything in two behind. We actually took the pieces that um, that became the our answers for the best practices, and, and we took those pieces and extracted them out of two, and then wrapped more of the library uh, three around that sort of mentality. Like so, um, custom events, for example, are were core in two, and they're absolutely core in three. Um, <clears throat> things like uh, attributes, managed attributes, and change events for attributes. Uh, we were starting to develop that in two. We flushed that out in three. Uh, having uh, a, a, a sort of a base class for something that interacts with the DOM, uh, that we had an element in two. Mm -hmm. It was the element class in two. And we, we sort of evolved that into the node class in three. Um, but also, you know, following the other best practices from other libraries. So using CSS selectors for yeah, I see selectors need better change. Well, quite right. Yeah, yeah. So and not what it was before. But it's become yeah. it's become uh, the common paradigm. So yeah. there's it, it is very flexible. It is very powerful. Uh, what's interesting is that um, some people don't actually notice that they they take for granted that functionality, but don't recognize that there is code behind. There, there's actually a significant code behind it. We had a selector engine in two, but two was really oriented at um, uh, just working with the DOM, uh, working with the DOM straight, using the DOM APIs, or 
get elements by ID, get elements by class name, uh, if it was available, or get elements by tag name, that sort of thing. And you're always working with those raw DOM uh, uh, methods. And we had some convenience methods to make it a little bit shorter to do that. But there wasn't really any magic there. You're always just getting DOM elements back. And you could use the selector engine if you wanted to do that. But a lot of people chose not to, because that would be including an additional script on their page. Right? But now everyone takes for granted the uh, uh, having access to the CSS selectors to do that. And so, you know, I think the new, new addition was for, also sort of user contributor content where you have galleries yeah. of things. How do things work actually? Um, so, the way it works is uh, the gallery is fantastic. I'm so, it, it's one of the coolest things that we have going on at 3 I'm super excited about it. But, um, Every every module, every bit of functionality in YUI3 is is packaged into this module. So there's a module registry system, and then uh, when modules are registered globally with the YUI global, then they become available for the use statement. And then in the use statement, you say you recognize this module by its name, and the the module is built by uh, it, it, it's basically associating a name to a function, and then that function takes the Y instance, the Y UI instance, and then it adds on the API. <laughs> so what the use statement does is it says, what's the name? Okay, find me the name in the registry or the function in the registry that, that is associated to that name, which is the function, and then it, it runs the function and it passes to the instance of Y into that. So it calls that function, and community contributed modules are exactly the same as Y UI modules, they are that same module registry function wrapper, it's yui.add, module name, and then the, the factory function. And so we take the um, community uh, contributed modules on yuilibrary.com slash gallery. And you can go on to there, anybody can go on to there if you have a yui library account, uh, which is free. You can go on there and you create a module, uh, I'm sorry, you register a module name and you point to the addresses of where it is, right? So the addresses of where it is, is there's GitHub repo. The YUI3 GitHub repo is just one of the repositories that we have on GitHub for the YUI account. Well, it's sort of like CDN, it's just sort of directly from there, right? Yeah, that's the end effect, yeah, yeah. right? So we have the, so the, the GitHub repo for the YUI3 gallery uh, hosts all of the gallery modules that have been added to the, uh, contributed to the gallery from the external community. And the, the stuff that gets up on the CDN, uh, there, are, there are sort of, I don't want to say two classes, but you can either be on the CDN or not be on the CDN. Mm -hmm. In order to be on the CDN, you have to sign a CLA, uh, which I have, you know, I brought a bunch of CLAs, so there's also an online version of the CLA, right. um, which licenses the content of VSD, and it says, uh, it basically makes it okay legally for us to host it on our CDN and, and push it out with, with our code. But, um, it, you know, the big question is, is it all right that it's free and open? Yeah, Heck yeah, you know, I'm contributing to the community, that's the idea, right? So, um, so then if you sign a CLA, then, you know, anything that you push into the gallery, you can say, post, uh, push this up to the, C, uh, to the CDN, and we pull it into our uh, gallery repo, which then gets pushed out to uh, our CDN, and then at that point, anybody can put in, use, a module from the gallery as there. With uh, skinning, it remain the same, or you have some new choice of skins there for, for the user interface built in code, it's just some classic thing that you provide with uh, Yahoo interface? Uh, well, the skinning in 2, we only really provided the SAM skin. And in 3, we have, we've been spending more of our time working on the core infrastructure, and so we don't have a lot of widgets out there for yeah. 3 yet. Most of the widget work, uh, we're letting the community take care of in the gallery, and they've done a fantastic job. I mean, there's 300 modules out there. Okay. Um, so right now, what we put out there, we have a SAM skin, and then for some components on kind of a case-by-case um, um, -case basis, there will be some additional skins, like Slider has something like eight skins or something like that available to it. But there isn't, at this point, there's not a unified uh, skin factory or anything like that, like theme roller or something mm -hmm. like that. I see. Uh, that's, that's something we want to see So it's coming. for the moment it's complicated to just switch between skins or something, right? Actually, the switching between skins is really easy. Yes, yes, yes. 
Right, well, yeah, so there's, there's something that you can put into your configuration to say. So, <clears throat> well, let me start by the, the configuration. So when you're instantiating your YUI, you will say, I want to override the default skin from Sam, I want to set it to this. You can do that on a, on a component by component basis if you want to. Um, but you say, instead of using skin, uh, skin Sam, I want to use radial or something, mm -hmm. right? And then when you say use slider, instead of making uh, an asynchronous request for the, uh, the SAM skin CSS, it'll make an asynchronous request for the other skin yeah. that you specified. But as far as the markup is concerned, you're right, you just add yui3-skin-radial instead of skin-sam and, and it applies. It's a lot of changes, right? Yeah, in, I think the, the infrastructure is where a lot of the change came. Which actually, the, um, one, of the, one of the parts about the, the particular core modules that are in YUI 3 that are, uh, are pretty exciting are the infrastructure pieces. So we didn't have well-defined infrastructure pieces in uh, 2. We had element and then things would extend yeah. element. In 3, we've uh, broken that down into <laughs> event target, attribute, base, widget, and plugin. And these are all separate pieces, some building upon yeah, the others. Can be extendable. Yeah, and each one you extend depending upon which set of functionality you want. You can either augment a class with those or you can extend those classes. And so you get um, the real benefit of that is that uh, a lot of the best practices for building a reusable widget are already there. You fill in these pieces of the API, and otherwise you get everything for free. Um, and the value of that becomes more evident over time. At first, it might seem like, why am I extending this class? And it, it might seem like a lot of code sometimes. Well, it, it really depends on how much you code, but, um, but then, you know, three months down the line, when you have to build something else onto it, add something else onto it, it it's practically done for you. So that's the infrastructure piece. I'm uh, pretty happy. Well, I think you can use uh, use interface library for building basically everything. You can get in mind any application that you cannot build. I'm sure there's something out there. <laughs> have you have you found any? Um, well, at this point, we aren't. We aren't abstracting anything inside of Canvas, for example, but that's just, yeah. you know, we're not building oh, anything. We are using Flash in some of our components, but uh, we have a, gra <coughs> a graphics layer on the way at this point. And mm. So that's pretty cool. Um, you have also, but, let's have this uh, browser plus extension. Yeah. Is it anyhow, I don't know working together with you, does anything? So Yahoo Plus is actually, um, what little I know about it is is pretty cool. Um, it, it it can help you break down some of the boundaries and some of the limitations of doing client side development. The problem is that it's a plugin that has to be elected to. It, it's an opt-in for the client, right? But you can do things like um, access the file system, um, doing cross-domain requests and things like that. You can do yeah request uh, drag, drag and drop directly on the browser thing. Right. Be it was before implemented what I was thinking right now. Right, non-native. Yeah, and so, yeah, there's, it's great in that it can sort of bring the future into older browsers, Yeah. but it, it's an opt-in thing. And I, I, I mean, there's probably a much better answer. I just don't know the answer. Yeah, okay. With uh, mobile devices, you're going to have any Interface libraries for mobile devices that target specifically mobile devices? Um, that's an interesting question, actually. Uh, so, like I said, we're, uh, most of the work that we've been spending on WayOI 3 at this point has been infrastructure, building out the core and the infrastructure, and then um, how many widgets we are ourselves going to build for, uh, for mobile devices specifically, which it when, when you say building for a mobile device, are you you're suggesting the the UIs that look like native yeah, UIs, yeah. right? So then that usually means they look like iPhone UIs, or they might look like Android yeah. UIs, right? So the, the two UIs are similar in many ways, but they have mm -hmm. differences, right? right? Um, 
And then that's just the WebKit class of, of mobile devices. So it becomes a larger question, and it mobile is um, frustrating. It's hot, but it's frustrating. Yeah, because I think uh, so. many fra framework developers trying to target specifically mobile devices like jQuery Mobile, like uh, mm -hmm. Accenture. There are a bunch of existing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sentra has done some fantastic work as far as replicating the UIs of, um, of the yeah, iPhone. iPhone yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, jQuery Mobile has done a fantastic job of, of identifying the fact that um, it's not just WebKit out there. Uh, you know, so we have the iPhone, we have uh, Android devices are really awesome, but that's not the majority of browsers that, that are, that are yeah, They're not right. the majority of mobile devices out there. And so if you actually want to have something that runs on all of these platforms, then you know, they, uh, they've put their, the, between the two, they've put their priorities in different places, and I think that they've both excelled uh, individually in those, in those areas. Um, YUI, we're spending more time on the infrastructure side, so it's uh, more in line with like the jQuery UI, I'm sorry, the, the jQuery mobile uh, mentality, where we want to make sure that it, it supports mm -hmm. all of those environments. As far as the specific, um, the specific UI patterns, uh, we haven't built a lot of those out at this point. We will, we will undoubtedly be building something. Me myself as a user interface developer, as well, I would love to see something like natively JavaScript based interface, yeah. not like, for example, in a jQuery mobile, you have to use the markup all the time in order to define the interface. Essentially, as well, having issues, especially with performance there. Yeah. But ideally, if yeah, well, I can do something to be like, just native JavaScript, so you can define new button, new whatever panel, window, thingy like this. And just yeah. operating on a pure JavaScript, so you can. Yeah, well, you're not going to get the the native controls in pure JavaScript. There, you have go-betweens like uh, PhoneGap and uh, some of the others that are there. It's escaping me right now, but that do actually bridge between uh, native and mobile. But then they're also, I'm sorry, native and, and web technologies. But they're then also focused to a subset of the browsers that are out there, or the devices, the subset of the devices that are out there. So um, if you're if you're going to say, I want my uh, UI to be accessible on any web-based, uh, any browser, so uh, on any mobile device that has a browser, it's going to show up with the UI, then that will be all JavaScript. And, uh, if it's all JavaScript, that means that you're, sub uh, that you're subject to the performance limitations of that device. And there's pretty often performance CPU, limitations. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so a big part of the concern for developing the mobile platforms is that you have to be fast and you have to be small. So we're, we're spending time working on uh, making sure that everything is really small. Everything is fast. You know, we have projects going on at, at Yahoo, uh, like LiveScan, for example, is using YUI and it's and it's um, based for the uh, tablets. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it, as they've been developing out, uh, we've also been making modifications and tweaks inside of YUI to make that experience faster and and make sure that that, that everything is packaged in such a way that it can be optimized for that that particular platform. So, you know, we have the benefit of, um, of real-world testers that are creating products that are going to have millions of viewers. Yeah. So, you know, it, we get some uh, real numbers to, to back it up. If you're talking about numbers, I mean, I mean users of uh, first of all, user interface libraries, mm -hmm. where in the position that we see with this library, I mean, on the rank, on the number of users. Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't really know. Um, some of the other folks on the team, they, they keep better track of like server stats and how many downloads and things like that, but I, we don't track the, um, we don't track the number of hits to the, to the CDN, for example. I don't know too much about the, the tracking of the numbers and things, but um, um, 
all I know about it is, is a lot more than I would want to be hosting from a personal machine. <laughs> <laughs> and the numbers are going up, right? So, yeah. uh, and things like the gallery also It's clear help. it's going to be even up. Let's see what it does right now and compare it to the second version. Yeah. A lot of changes. Yeah. Good things. Okay. Yeah, people are pretty happy with it. Yeah. And then, you know, the, even us on the team. The, the do one we have to do the YUI2 thing? Because right? I would really look rather. Because you know, <laughs> I think a lot of changes comes when people see, for example, user interface on the new Yacht mm -hmm. what it was before. Yeah. Well, not talking about what it was in 96, for yeah. example. Yeah, yeah. Yes. My my history with Yahoo is since 1994, mm. and I was like you know keeping an eye on like, what's going on, and uh, I've seen a lot of changes. How homepage change, how mail services change, yeah. and new user interface. It looks good and it works it's really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's fast too. And they've been they've been really great to us. The mail team has been really great to us. We, you know, wagging the finger at us. This should go faster. This should go faster. Yeah. We're trying, you know, but we're making they it happen. The, the so. idea is where they're not loading everything and their pieces remain unloaded until you're actually accessing right. them and all this stuff. Yeah. Like that's loaded the, on demand. Right, that's the sort of best practices that yeah. have developed over time for the same many developers having this issue, they just blow, making blow fair, loading everything, and like, here right. you go, user using it. And then the, the initial page load is super heavy and super slow. Uh, and if you're in an environment where, or if your clients, for example, the, the clients in an environment with bad latency, it's a terrible user experience, right? And we can't afford that. I mean, YUI as a library can't afford to put out a product that that has that baked into the system. And of course, Yahoo can't afford you know, to create a user experience that's unnecessarily laggy. That's terrible. So again, that's the benefit of having having uh, properties working for uh, properties that have such mm -hmm. high numbers of, of users. Cool. Good. You want to add anything to that? Want to say anything to the developers and um, Calgary, me, Greece, and all <laughs> watching me? If you haven't tried YUI 3, you should go and check it out. YUILibrary.com. And um, there are videos and uh, plenty of documentation, and IRC channel, and things like that. It's a really, really awesome community. Someone's still using IRC, yeah? So me not Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, the YUI channel on Freenode? Yeah? It's hopping. Yeah, the really, really friendly people there too. But, uh, nice. That's where I actually, where I do most of my support is yeah. on IRC. Yeah, I'm in there every day. That's so nice to know. I think I'm in there right now. <laughs> I'm going to risk you there. All right, good. Good. Thank you very much for coming. You bet. Thanks yeah. for asking the question. Yeah, bye-bye.